Its double action eases the pain and relieves congestion quickly. And new Sinutab Nighttime is now available to also aid restful sleep. Sinutab and Sinutab Nighttime relieve sinus pain and headache fast. A standard host values. <laughs> you can with a Nissan. The series do Primera with ABS as standard. When this whole world starts getting me down, and people are just too much for me to face. <laughs> on new club world and arrive ready for business. Look, I'm sure there's nothing you can do, but our car's been abandoned. Your membership number is? 812-456. The patrolman's on his way, madam. And as today is make or break day for the finals placings, you can catch up with tonight's action on the road to the Super Bowl at 8 o'clock. In half an hour, it's the Cosby Show. First, it's the movie show. Nearly 2,000 years ago, a handful of Romans dropped their togas and a couple of fresh logs by the campfire, and Exeter was born. Lesser mortals may insist that nothing good has come from this county town, but Exeter's proud achievements have included Vivian Lee, the Gossard Wonderbra, Gary Glitter's auntie, and, at 155, the world's oldest living anything, Timothy the Tortoise. Since Timothy first arrived here back in 1870, many visitors have come to this quiet corner of Devon. The Germans dropped by with a few bombs in the 1940s, and those lovable mop tops the Beatles played at the local ABC cinema in the 60s. But since then, it's all been a bit quiet, really. Until tonight, when Exeter reviews Merchant Ivory's Remains of the Day. Casts an eye over Tommy Lee Jones in a rather tight situation in Heaven and Earth. And Robin Williams in a rather tight dress in Mrs. Doubtfire. Laurie drops in on English Rose, Lizette Anthony. Oh, good Lord, good Lord. And meets the old timers still acting the part as the stars of yesteryear. Goodbye, Rosie. And I meet everybody's favourite director, Martin Scorsese. <laughs> good heavens, though. 
At one time, this city was famous for the hardened press gangs that freely roamed the streets in search of unwilling recruits for a life on the open sea. So, in the spirit of the city's grim history, we pressed four people into being this week's reviewers. And here they are, me lovelies. Who better than Christian, the old sea dog who spent five years in the Navy? It shows. He actually thinks Godzilla vs. King Kong was a great movie and has a parrot called Buster. Tanya's got a fatal attraction for chocolate, a basic instinct for shopping, and has received more than a few indecent proposals when out clubbing. Not so for Simon, who prefers 11 hairy men called Exeter City, and a hairy rodent, his guinea pig, Tinkerbell. But when he's down at his evening job, it's two fat ladies, 88. Mira's an amazing eight times a month girl at her local cinema. She prefers only the ugliest movies like Rizwar Dogs, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, and The Elephant Man. Dig it. Dig it. Heaven and Earth is a turbulent epic set in 50s Vietnam. It follows the struggles of Lee Lee, a young innocent farm girl caught between her new American life and her old traditions, at a time when it seems Heaven and Earth have changed places. Look, I told you, I know what be your girlfriend. You one girl, you go see hooker. Don't bother me. I'm a little too old for hookers. I just wanted to meet you. And I don't care about the money. Your girlfriend introduced us, and that's all I wanted. Since I have gone to all of this trouble, you think it'd be all right if I just came in, talked to you for a few moments? Just talk. Please, just a moment. Please. Okay, one minute. I leave door open. You bad guy, one funny move. I call MP. They right there. Okay. I good girl. I thought it was a really good idea to have a film from a Vietnamese woman's point of view, but Oliver Stone failed miserably because it's impossible for a man to direct it. I don't think the violence in the film was violent enough, basically. It was a bit half-hearted, if you ask me. We get quite a lot of Marines in Exeter, and they do act quite a lot differently than the sensitive character portrayed by Tommy Lee Jones. No offence. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones is a very good actor. I admire a bloke who can uh, become a sex symbol with a face like the dark side of the moon. Lee, could you love me? I think the girl who played Lee was brilliant. She went from being like an 18-year-old to sort of being a middle-aged mother, and she sort of portrayed both roles really, really well. In a marriage, there's no such thing as one person happy, one miserable, both miserable. That's the way life works. The events in the film were really badly strung together. They were just vomited at you. It was completely ludicrous. There were some parts in it which were actually quite shocking. Um, there's a part where she actually does get captured and she's taken into this place where she's tortured and electrocuted. I found that a bit gruesome. I hated it, I loathed it, I detested it, I didn't like it at all. I think most girls would probably be put off by it because it is actually a Vietnam film, but I think if you don't go and see it, you're really missing out. I give Heaven and Earth 8 out of 10. Me too, 8. 3. An unconvincing 2. Which gives Heaven and Earth 21 points. Lizette Anthony has already enjoyed a long career spanning half a dozen films, several sitcoms, and even a couple of staples through her chest as a Playboy centerfold. More recently, she played the scorned temptress in Hour of the Pig, and Laurie went to meet her. While all you Brits are shivering around the fireplace, your fellow compatriot, Lizette Anthony, is soaking up the rays in glorious Los Angeles. She came to pursue a career in acting, and it's working. And today, she invited us into her house for a cup of real tea and her thoughts on Los Angeles living. Are you friendly with any of the neighbors? No, I'm not friendly with anyone. <laughs> so you're British snob. No, I'm not a snob. I just, I just, I am, um, I fiercely guard my, my privacy. I can't bear people coming and banging on the door, just, you know, dropping around. Your phone Pool is fine. They're just stupid. There's nothing intellectual Get about in the car, them. Where's your swimming pool? Where's my swimming pool? I ah, know. If you have a swimming pool, people don't swim in it. <laughs> I mean, it's all bad for your hair, darling. The Hour of the Pig, a medieval romp in which a pig is put on trial for murder, is the latest outing for the woman once described by Barbara Cartland as the perfect virgin. The ex convent girl starred in the hugely popular sitcom Three Up, Two Down, and then moved to LA and posed for Playboy magazine. Yes, I did a spread for Playboy, which was a very calculated move. I was deemed and seemed only to be Lizette Anthony, who's light and bright and fluffy, and in this very, very su successful sitcom, that's all she is. She's just pretty, she's just nothing, nothing, nothing. My only regret is that I didn't stand up and say, so what, and sod off, quite frankly. 
Well. <laughs> but the most recent film that English audiences have seen you in is Hour of the Pig. Brilliant story, fabulously written, very funny. Fiat, to me, I just made me howl with laughter. <laughs> because the trouble was, once I got the laugh, I couldn't stop laughing like that. So it was <laughs> You drive your um, husband nuts. But... Um, I always drive my husband nuts. So. But uh, it was like a cross between a kamikaze mosquito and uh, and, a, and a donkey, which seems appropriate. Woody Allen and Mia Farrow didn't have a lot of laughs during the making of Husbands and Wives, but for Lizette, it was the big breakthrough. I hate you and your stupid Get friends! It was a very heightened experience. It was a very frightening experience because I had just done th two and a half years of really... Uh, basically finding it incredibly difficult to work because I, I always thought that I could at least do crap TV. I forbid you. It's a, a very useful experience finding out how utterly irrelevant you are. You're in trouble now. That was such an unusual film because he was in the middle of his breakup with Mia and... None of us knew that. And then he wasn't in the middle of the breakup. The, 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 the photographs were found on the last day of shooting. My wife is becoming attracted to somebody else. In the summer, she's in Look Who's Talking Now with her all-time heartthrob, John Travolta. I went to a very strict convent school, and even Julie Andrews' films, when she kissed, they would soft focus it. So somehow, I don't understand how, Greece slipped by the nuns, so we, adolescent girls, were just completely in, um, just uh, passing out. You've done a couple spreads in Hello! magazine. Um, were you... my clothes on. Wasn't that restrained of me? <laughs> were you aware of the curse of Hello! magazine? That every time a couple poses for hello, by the time it is published, the couple breaks up. No! Oh, good Lord! Good Lord! <laughs> hey, what's the matter with this? Our next film is about a top-secret dog developed in a laboratory when the mutt escapes, man's best friend turns into the neighborhood's worst nightmare. Look around you. Each of these animals is endowed with a specific desirable trait. If you took the DNA from each, and genetically spliced it into the DNA of a breed of a dog, you would have a magnificent creature. Each of these traits have been bred in a max. His intelligence is so advanced that he can operate as a standalone unit without a human hand. He can comprehend almost 350 spoken commands. Is that in English or in Spanish? What I am trying to tell you is that in the right hands, Max can save thousands of lives. In the wrong hands, he can be a deadly weapon. A dog at home called Max, and to be perfectly honest with you, I think I would have rather have spent an hour and a half watching him than watching this film, because I definitely would have got a lot more enjoyment out of it. <laughs> the dog was really well trained, the way it was ferocious, and then it was really sweet and gentle, but it's put me off buying a dog, and if you don't like dogs, don't watch it. The film did make me laugh in places, especially the scene between the two dogs, when he's chasing the collie around the room, and you finally find her on the bed, <laughs> nuzzling into the pillows and leading him on. It has every cliché known to man. That's exactly why I loved it. There is actually this one part where the dog actually all of a sudden produces these claws and climbs up this tree and catches this cat and it actually swallows it as if it's a snake. I mean, it's totally unrealistic and totally disgusting. Ali Sheedy was put in the film basically to bring in the viewers, but the acting was so terrible, even I could have done it. Thank you, Max. Sweet. Unfortunately, my fellow reviewers have no taste. It was probably the crappiest film I've seen all year, and it was brilliant. I'll give Man's Best Friend five. Four out of ten. Shockingly bad, one. Howlingly good, ten. Which gives Man's Best Friend 20 points. In part two, I meet the high priest of Hollywood directors, Martin Scorsese, Exeter samples what remains of the day with Anthony Hopkins and what remains of Mrs Doubtfire's D cups. I'll see you shortly. So where's all the cowboys? <laughs> What's that? We should have left this stuff. Well, let's do it. Have a nice day. OK, so let's leave it all. The 106? No. Tony's flat. The Peugeot 106. Leave it all behind. What? My Tony? Heartburn, acid indigestion, trapped wind. 
Andrew's antacid tablets help relieve three kinds of indigestion. They fizz pleasantly on the tongue, and two tablets can neutralize the acid in five lemons. When it comes to the acid test, Andrew's antacid tablets help relieve three kinds of indigestion. Suck them and see. Johnny, don't go now. We are going to put this one. We have, have got room. We have <laughs> got the tickets. Take care, darling. Take care, Marianne. Daddy! Hello, Autoglass. How can I help you? And the ferry leaves in two and a half hours. No problem, sir. Why don't we meet you there? And we'll bill your insurance company direct. If you need glass for any car, any place, any time, Autoglass. One call does it all. 51, 52, 53... From time to time, when you just can't sleep, take new Nitol. Just two tablets, and Nitol gently helps you fall fast asleep. Try new Nitol, only available from your pharmacist, and say good night all. Grass, biro, yuck. Hmm, looks like that's just too much for some ultra powders. This calls for new vanish gel. Before you wash, brush in new Vanish Gel stain removing agents, which go deep into those tough stains to make them vanish. New Vanish Gel wipes out stains some ultra powders alone can leave behind. I found this jar of gales in the cupboard the other morning, and I remembered how I loved it on toast. Because I love gales on my toast. Gales goes on brown bread, white bread. It spreads on wholemeal bread. It cruises down your croissant till it drips off of the side. It basks in baps and bagels, buns, baguettes, or in your bloomers. It doesn't matter what it goes on. Gales make the most of your toast. Natural Plus with plant extracts works in harmony with your body. Natural Plus. Welcome back to Exeter, where so far our reviewers have awarded Heaven and Earth 21 points and given man's best friend the pause down with just 20 points. I'm about to talk to a man whose godlike status in the annals of film history completely invalidates the traditionally light-hearted, almost humorous approach that Movie Watch normally adopts. After 18 blockbusters, four wives, and not a single Oscar, this man, this legendary director, this auteur extraordinaire, this Martin Scorsese, deserves more. In Age of Innocence, there's no swear words, no violence, no Italian-Americans, only Michelle Pfeiffer, Daniel Day-Lewis, and Winona Ryder in a tale of elegant Manhattan. Martin, how do you think an audience uh, raised on films like uh, Taxi Driver, Goodfellas, Mean Streets will accept a film like um, The Age of Innocence? This is a different picture from the type of film that I usually make. <laughs> oh, it's certainly a violent film, I think, but viol the emotional violence of the piece is done through very polite behavior, and I find that to be more interesting. This tries for something a little purer in that placing it 100, 100 and some odd years ago, you could just deal with the people. Age of Innocence is pretty fairly much in line with the other films I made with the two people who are trying to break away from uh, uh, a code or a society that's extremely rigid. Um, and Goodfellas, um, uh, they're, they're involved in this uh, sort of mafia situation. Uh, and once, they, once they, they do something out of line, they have to pay for it. And it's very similar in this case, too. How come you never use Bobby De Niro in the film, man? Well, in a case like this, it, it, they had to have a certain manner. I mean, it had to be a certain way. And um, um, in the case of these people at that, at that time, um, uh, there were no, there's no aristocracy in America, but, uh, but they were, if there was an aristocracy, it was them. Mm. And uh, in a sense, they were more English than the English that they were emulating. Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, and indeed Goodfellas were the outstanding films of their respective decades. Why do you think you haven't won an Oscar? Oh, the subject matter. And the subject matter is quite offensive at times uh, to many people. And, you know, the Academy has to, it's, a, it's an it's a institution that has to launch another one, uh, another people like that next, to sort of, sort of go back into training. Yeah. I sometimes like to do um, what appear to be uh, mainstream pictures, um, 
to learn. Isabella Rossellini was one of your four wives. Has your personal life suffered for your work? Everybody thinks that. Right. And I guess that's a cliche that... But it's really interesting. It's a cliche, and maybe because it's a, it is a cliche, because maybe it's true. Yes. But, uh, you know, this is a very demanding, um, a very demanding uh, um, profession. Um, and I would think the tensions always arise, naturally. But I, uh, it's become some sort of romantic notion, uh, I think. This, you know, the filmmaker off alone, everyone gone. Yeah, it is this sort and of... And there he is with his camera, yes. Do you think in your films the tendency to... <laughs> murder, just murder. Remains of the Day is a period story of a butler and a housekeeper very much in love. Sadly, one of them refuses to show it, and the other one's too afraid to admit it. Anthony Hopkins and Emma Thompson play the romantics, struggling to put things to rights. I don't quite hmm? understand what you're getting at, Mr. Stevens. I am the housekeeper in this house, and your father is the under-butler. In other houses, I was accustomed to address the under-servants by their Christian names. Hmm. Miss Kenton, if you would stop to think for a moment, you would realize that how inappropriate it is for one such as yourself to address as William, someone such as my father. Well, I'm sure, Mr. Stevens, it must have been very galling for your father to be called William. I like Merchant Ivory films, so I was expecting a lot, and I got a lot. It was flawless. Thank you. It is unbelievably boring. Two and a half hours of nothing. Nothing happens all the way through. Christian obviously didn't actually understand the film because the whole point of the film is that nothing does actually happen. They're obviously totally in love with each other, but in those days it wasn't the done thing to actually express that. The actors seemed to catch the period really, really well. It wasn't like watching a film, it was like staring through a window into Darlington Hall and eavesdropping on the conversations. The facts of life, Stevens. Birds, bees. I mean, you are familiar, aren't you? Anthony Hopkins was brilliant. He was very formal and reserved, but you could see how far the extent of his feelings went. I quite fancy Emma Thompson in a horsey sort of way. Unfortunately, she's a bit fond of these period dramas. Although Christopher Reeve did play his part very well, I did expect to see him now and again bounding out of rooms, rip open his shirt and fly off into the wide blue yonder. Basically, the British film industry only knows how to do this sort of retrospective crap. We haven't made a decent film in years. You are, all of you, amateurs. It's a sort of film that will actually appeal to older people, but I think anyone can actually enjoy it, obviously apart from Christian. I give Remains of the Day 10 out of 10. 10. A moving 9. What are they on about? Nothing. Which gives Remains of the Day 29 points. Howdy. Hollywood is more than just a movie-making town. It's a treasure trove of celebrity memorabilia. And as we found out today, there's a collector for everything, including for autographs of people you've never even heard of. I'm a collector of westerns anyway. This we won an Academy Award on. I collect cancel checks of celebrities. Uh, pretty much just autographs. I was a TV love goddess of the 50s. <laughs> Celebrity underwear. <laughs> you look at these people and you go, whoa, I remember him from these old movies. Can you tell me what these different films are? Uh, this is uh, Tarzan's Fight. Uh, no, uh, Tarzan's Greatest Adventure. Tarzan's Fight for Life. Do you remember any of the lines from your Tarzan film? Oh, the uh, first ones, yeah, uh, but I don't, I'm not going to say them anymore. My mouth freezes every time I think of them. What was the first movie you were in? Uh, before the R Gang, it uh, was way back in the old uh, Jesse Glasky studio in 1928. And what was the name of it? I think it was Sunny Side Up, with, and I played Pola Negra's daughter in that. Now, what brings you to an event like this? Do you come to meet the fans and stuff? Um, I was invited to come and it just, it makes you feel so good to think that people still have a warm spot in their heart for you, you know, because sometimes you think, well, people don't care anymore, but this is sort of, it's, it's really nice and it's, uh, to me, I think it's sort of an honor. Nowhere could you get the happy feeling when you are stealing that extra bar. All of a sudden, after all of these years, people are fascinated with memorabilia and fascinated with pictures. And so the stars all of a sudden come out and people come up to them and talk to them for five or 10, 20 minutes. And I remember when you did this and I remember when you did that. And it's just kind of a wonderful thing because they really felt that they were forgotten. And I think that's why they come and do it. They're, I think they're just as shocked, you know, as they can possibly be. I wish you could for the one. I love to find me today. The 
is Snow White speaking, and I'm signing autographs today for anybody who'd like to have some, and I love everybody. Goodbye, Grumpy Super. Goodbye. Who are the stars that you're interested in meeting? Uh, especially the uh, voice of Snow White. Super. What do you got for sale here? All kinds of motion picture posters from the 1930s to the 1990s. A lot of original dated lithographs that have now become extremely collectible. Probably the most valuable thing I have here today would be a lobby card from uh, Captain Blood, 1936 Errol Flynn film. The lobby card is worth about $1,500. This is me. I did one. And this is me, and this is me. I'm the makeup artist. This is, this is um, Ed Wood's picture. This is Frankenstein's daughter. And this is Killers in Space with Peter Graves. And you're the makeup artist. Yeah. I'm going to bring some more still down. You are so pretty. I was a TV love goddess of the 50s. And um, I was fired for being too sexy. I was in Jailhouse Rock as the stripper. And my legs are known all over the world with Elvis sitting in between them. I don't know if you know that shot. It's a very famous shot. This is a partial collection of all my, my 50s magazines, and they're all in pretty good condition, such as I am, I guess. I'm still walking around. I'm 65 years old. I consider myself an uh, endangered species, so I ask people to be nice to me. There's not too many of us around that are still walking around and moving, and nothing hurts, you know? Tell me what your most memorable line in Children of the Corn was. He wants you too, Malachi. He wants you too. Is this your last movie? No, I am currently in the Adams Family 1 and Adams Family Values. Oh, you are? Oh, I miss those two. I play Cousin It. I've got these um, pictures that I brought along. Just in case, you never know. What do you do with an idea for a film about an out-of-work actor who's good with housework, children, women's clothes, and endless silly voices? Simple. You cast Robin Williams, give him a good set of granny gags, and spend around $36 million. <laughs> Oh, let's see. Oh, what a perfectly appointed little cubby. Look at this. Everything has its place and name tag. How precise. Lovely. My husband never appreciated it. Oh, poor dot. That's not the reason you divorced him, was it? No. So sad, because marriage can be such a blessing. So can divorce. Ooh. Really a great fan of the perfect American family films, but this one I thought was a bit better because of the fact they were splitting up. There was dissension in the household. Can't you just tell Mommy sorry? I've always fancied Sally Field. Even though she's uh, quite old now, I would love to be a toy boy. If my boyfriend walked into the room dressed as a woman, I would know immediately from the way he walked, the way he behaved, the way he talked. And for her not to recognise Robin mm. Williams after 14 years of marriage was just completely unbelievable. You remind me of someone. Fans of Robin Williams will enjoy this film. Yeah! He is better when he's ad-libbing, and you do get quite a few good ad-libs throughout the film. Nancy and I are still looking for the other half of my head. Look at me right now, money penny. I want to undo that bow and get to know you. There are actually some scenes in the film where Robin Williams is changing from being this old granny back into being himself again. There's two scenes like that and they seem to go on forever and they are really annoying. By the end of the film, uh, his latex makeup was actually making me feel quite nauseous. Mm. It's got a nice little moral message at the end of it. I think if my parents were splitting up and I was a bit younger, it would probably be quite comforting. I don't have any children myself, but visiting them once a week seems more than enough, really. <laughs> I give Mrs. Doubtfire 9 out of 10. 3, 5. The Watchable 7. Which gives Mrs. Doubtfire 24 points, making Remains of the Day our Movie Watch recommendation of the week. And that's it from the Jewel of the West. Next week, Movie Watch moves northwards to York, where our reviewers will be taking a trip to Babe Central with Wayne's World Mark II. And Michelle Pfeiffer's New York High Society with Age of Innocence. Laurie teams up with Chris Penn to clear up after the earthquake. This is minor damage, you know. I take a look at how you hold your peace, whether you're a cop or a cowboy. <laughs> All of which we crammed into the next show, which is from York. I'll see you there. Movie words! like to know that Robin Williams is listed as one of the week's special guests on The Big Breakfast, so don't you dare wake up without it. <laughs>